It's not quite time travel, but it is impressive. In 55 minutes, I've traveled from London Liverpool Street through the eastern suburbs of the capital to the furthest flung station in the county on the main line, Manningtree, which I think is the gateway to one of the loveliest parts of Essex. It's a great place to begin an exploration of a county that has much to offer the traveller. Sure, from Canvey Island to Clacton and Southend to Stansted, there's plenty that's familiar about Essex, but I want to give you a different perspective. This is one of my favourite bike rides, with the sun on my back heading deep into Constable country. An area of outstanding natural beauty. No, not me, Dedham Vale, this lovely corner of North East Essex where John Constable went to school and painted. Before though, I start to explore the artist's trail, I'm gonna set the controls for the heart of the Sun Inn to grab a bite to eat. The sun always seems to shine in Essex. Constable found much to celebrate artistically in the rolling countryside and big eastern sky of this part of the world, but he also included the church here in Dedham in no fewer than 26 paintings. Angela Horner is a local artist who gets inspiration from Constable country. It's the beauty of the area. You have um, a natural uh, valley, the church, which is an aspect that um, Constable painted many times, Dedham Church in the far distance. Um, it also is an absolutely beautiful little rural area with the Stour Valley and Stour River running through it. And he was brought up on the river. For a small Essex village, St Mary's Church is both vast and venerable. The present incarnation is almost 500 years old, exactly as Constable would have seen it, and it includes a painting of his, The Ascension. You can follow the south bank of the Stour through Little Hawksley, Belsham St Paul, and a personal favourite place named Steeple Bumstead to Saffron Walden, the picture postcard perfect market town on the placid northwest frontier of Essex. It's a lovely place to wander and to find independent shops such as Art Decoratif, whose proprietor is Anne Miller. I've been here 12 years and we have regular customers from all over the world and we specialise in vintage jewellery but we sell all small objets d'art. People come from all over East Anglia and London to get the experience of a small market town. It's just got a unique character, apparently it's got very strong ley lines which attracts people, very similar to Glastonbury and once you come here you don't want to leave. Since Saffron Walden was on the main coaching route between London and Cambridge about five centuries ago, you won't be astonished to learn there's some excellent pubs here. The Cross Keys is officially a four-star inn with 500 years of history, some delicious food and also the chance to stay the night. Go and have a look. There's just six rooms with home comforts carefully installed within a half-timbered chunk of history. And if you want breakfast without the bed, well, Is your cappuccino? look at that. Then I recommend Molly's Coffee and Cake Shop, just tucked around the back of the Cross Keys, where you can get a full English and the classiest cappuccino in town. Time to check out Saffron Walden's turf maze, thought to be around 800 years old and the largest example in the world. Yes, this is a turf maze and here's the idea. There is one mile of turf track cut here. It's the foremost of eight surviving turf mazes in England. And the idea is that you walk every single inch of it. It will take you about 20 minutes but unlike a real tall maze, there's no chance of getting lost. If you get stuck, well, you can just hop from one bit to another. Ah. 
At the top end of Essex, you reach Audley End, one of the finest stately homes in England in a perfect English country garden. English heritage, yes, it's theirs, and it is. It was once three times larger, but the owners downsized it to make it easier to manage, with many of the stones going to help build Cambridge. A new corner of the property has just been opened, bringing a fresh dimension to Audley End, as guide Kim Anscombe told me. Well, we've recently recreated the nursery that was used by the children in the 1820s, and this is the nursery that they would have occupied. It was derelict up until six months ago, and it has taken two years for the curators to source the furniture, and it is as it was, and the children would have recognised it as it is today. It's a space that we want children to come and enjoy. They can play with all of the toys, sit on the rocking horse, play with the toys and the dolls, um, and experience the Victorian nursery. We have dressing up, hats and bonnets. It's all been made for the children to try and use. The house at Audley End has no cellar, and so the fuel was kept up here in the coal gallery, winched in through the windows. Also here are the 18th century version of the ensuite bathroom, hip baths, which were taken to the residence rooms along with buckets of hot water. So much for upstairs. You also get a pretty good view of what life was like downstairs here in the service wing. Capability Brown designed the grounds to place Audley End amid suitably splendid landscapes. But Essex also specialises in seascapes with the longest shore of any county in England. How big is Essex? Well, it's 50 miles as the Kitty Wake flies from the grounds of Audley End House to here at one of my favourite hidden corners of the county, Burnham on Crouch, starting point for an adventure on the water. Burnham on Crouch is a great place to acquaint yourself with the crinkled coastline that wraps around Essex, even if you don't have your own sailing yacht. I'm stepping aboard the Royal Corinthian Yacht Club launch with Kieran Alexander of the Essex Wildlife Trust. The River Crouch is close enough to the North Sea to be tidal, which means there's a rich diversity of wildlife. Essex is really special for wildlife because of the huge amount of habitat that is available to them. It's unlike other places where we don't have as much habitat, Essex has a huge amount of habitat and it's relatively undisturbed. It might sound odd saying that about Essex, but Essex is and has places that are truly, truly wild. And a short way downstream you'll find a remarkable construction project. What's happening behind me looks industrial, but in fact, the innards of London are helping to create the great outdoors in Essex. Here's what's going on. The spoil from the Crossrail project, the railway going underneath central London, is brought out here by ship. It is then being used to build up the island behind me which will then be flooded with salt water to create one of the largest wetland reserves in Europe. Back on dry land, there's plenty more to see of this tranquil waterside town before it's time to leave. Branch Line Britain at its very best, yet London Liverpool Street is barely an hour away from here. Thank you for joining me on a trip around some of the treasures of Essex, ready and waiting for you to enjoy next time you need an escape from the modern world.